The presence of God is in this place. How many of you believe that? I will just speak briefly and then we'll pray. One of the things that God laid on my heart to do today when I come is to pray, take out time for us to pray for the sick amongst us. The presence of God is here and God is going to heal people. And while we were worshipping, the Lord just showed me a vision right now that not only will He heal people here, but He will heal those who are connected to you who are in the hospitals. And there will be miracles in this place. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 14. Let's just walk around the team for this um, weekend. And then I'll move you to another scripture that the Lord laid on my heart. And then we'll build from there. He says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. I want us to read that verse in concert. That means we'll read it together. All right? And thank God that we have screens and projectors here. So at the count of three, I want us to read this verse 14 together. One, two, three. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So I'll read on alone down to verse 18. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, be filled with the Spirit. Now, when you read from verse 5, from verse 14, where we read, it's actually a charge from Paul the Apostle. Let me begin by letting us understand that the book of Ephesians was written at a time when Paul had matured in his ministry. It was not written at the beginning of his ministry. Paul had spent some years preaching the gospel in different parts of what we now call the Middle East and Europe. Planted a lot of churches and all that we read that God did with him in the book of Acts. So having gained experience in the work of ministry and being a matured believer, he wrote this particular epistle to a church. But you realize that the book of Ephesians is very instrumental to the discipling of a believer. And I thank God that in this church we do discipleship. I don't know how long our own is, but my own, when I was doing my own, it was two years. Every week, two hours for two years. And when we finished, they say we were not done. So they just ordained us like that. Amen. So at that time, we thought they were suffering us because we were all young people. But one of the things that it did to us was it was able to build a strong foundation of the world. And I agree with what our pastor said. Without the word of God, you can be anointed, but there is a limit. Even before the anointing will kill you, there is a limit of the operation of that anointing in your life. Every appliance, every product cannot be effectively used without instructions from the manual. So God will not put a deposit of his spirit in your life without a body of instruction and knowledge, which is the word of God that will help you. But when you have a strong foundation of the word of God and you have the spirit of God, the sky is your starting point. Amen. However, the book of Ephesians were revelations that Paul received at the beginning of his walk with God. In the book of Galatians chapter 1, Paul said that he encountered Jesus and he had experiences with Jesus in a place called Arabia and he was there for three years. And it was in that time of experience with the Lord that he received this revelation. So the book of Ephesians is divided into three. The first part, which is from chapter 1 to chapter 3, 
comes to bring us to the awareness and the knowledge of what God has achieved for us in Christ. And that's why in chapter 2 he says that we are seated or he made us to sit with Christ in heavenly places. He speaks about the finished work of redemption and all that we come to enjoy in the kingdom. Excuse me. But from chapter 4 to chapter 5, it was a charge. Now that you have received Jesus Christ and you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now that you, have, you, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now that you have, you have been brought to share in authority with Jesus Christ and all that God has made available for you. It begins to give us a charge that we have a role to play. Our Christian experience will be complete when we play our part. When we become participants to enjoy the fullness of God that has, of what God has achieved for us in Christ Jesus. So chapter 4 and chapter 5 speaks of your walking in Christ. The word walk, there's the word W-A-L-K, walk. This is not W-O-R-K, walk. If he had used the word walk, it would be in terms of service, in terms of ministry. But when he uses the word walk, he's talking about a relationship. Now let me break at this point to take you somewhere to Galatians. Okay, I'll come back to that. So Paul began to instruct us from chapter 4 to chapter 5 what is required for us to have an effective relationship with God. And in chapter 5 where we read from verse 14, it was an instruction. In the midst of a world that is filled with perversion, that is filled with wickedness, the Bible says in the last days that the love of many will wax cold. As a matter of fact, God will not be the subject of the day. The Bible says men will be lovers of themselves. And you see that in our society today, especially in this generation of technology, of advancement and everything, it's all done to please self. It's now a generation of comfort. In the time of our parents when they were young, I'm not sure they had fans in their church building. Even in the village, I know that now some village churches now have fans. Is that true? <laughs> but now you don't have fans in your church, especially in Meduguri, you are in trouble. People will not come. <laughs> Amen. And I believe that very soon we'll have air conditioners here. In Jesus' name. So it's all about self and at that time which we are living in people will no longer be interested in having a relationship with god people will no longer be interested in working with god in growing to know god for who he is people will no longer realize that the christian life is a life of experience with god it's not just supposed to be book and pencil it's not just supposed to be read the bible and that's all Everything that you read in the word of God is supposed to translate to an experience. John said in 1st John chapter 1 from verse 1, That which we have heard, that which we have seen, that which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. The only way you can know the truth completely is when you have an experience of what you know. He said, then it will make you free. So, in this kind of generation... Paul is giving us a charge. And in verse 14 there in chapter 5 of Ephesians, a very instrumental charge that is needed for any believer that wants to be serious with God. As a matter of fact, I discovered that is the theme for the year. It says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. First of all, you will need to awake. Somebody who should be awoken or who shall awake is someone who is sleeping and now the bible is comparing a state of sleeping with a state of spiritual death that when a man is just serving god passively when all that is known about your christian experience is just coming to church and attending bible studies and attending sunday school and all of that and we have a wonderful service in fact, people come to church, I'm sorry to say this, but now, people come to church just to show the new clothes that they have sewn. And there's no harm in that. But we have reduced Christianity to physical and mundane things. 
And so the Bible says, when you find a man at this point, he is sleeping. When a man is asleep physically, he is unconscious of his environment. I've seen people that can sleep and open their mouth so wide, a fly can enter. Have you seen that? The next time you travel, just make sure you are awake all through the journey. If it's not by air, even by air, people sleep. He's so unconscious of what's happening around him that you can literally fold a paper and put it in the mouth and he will, he will not know what's happening. Now, the Bible says that is how some people are, respectfully speaking. That's how some people are spiritually. They come to church. They say amen. They dance. But spiritually, they are oblivious. They are void of what is happening around them. As far as the spirit realm is concerned, as far as their life and their walk with God, as far as interacting with the realm where God dwells is concerned, they are dead. They don't know what is happening around them. The person does not know when an attack is imminent. Can I tell you something? People don't just wake up one morning and discover somebody just died. In the realm of the spirit, there are no coincidences. Everything that happens in the physical was carefully plotted and orchestrated and finished in the realm of the spirit. And because nothing was done about it, it took time to manifest. That means that everything that you will see God do in your life, in as much as God will supply the power and the grace, it has to be in active participation with your faith for you to see it come to pass in your life. Nothing just happens as far as the spirit realm is concerned. And that is the realm where every believer dwells and lives from. The Bible says that we are born of God. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 4 verse 24 that God is spirit. If we are born of God, it means that we are born of the spirit. It means that we are spiritual. And therefore, our life must take dressing from that place. Everything about you must be an expression of the knowledge that you have about who you are from that realm. Witches and wizards know this. And in their limited knowledge, they know how to manipulate the realm of the physical to favor them. But do you know that God has given you authority and dominion as a believer? That you can change and create things from the realm of the spirit and cause it to manifest. That was what God meant or Jesus meant when he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. If you read the King James translation of that verse, I believe that is Matthew 6 verse 10. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, not on earth. If he said on earth, he meant on this earth that we are standing on. Is that true? The one that has the force of gravity that is holding everybody down. But I hope you know that there are two dimensions of the earth. There is the earth that you are standing on, that you are sitting on right now. And there is the earth that is habiting you, which is this body. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So when he said, thy will be done in earth, he was talking about this body. So everything that will manifest through this body should be from the template that the word of God has declared and it should be from the climate that you are living from in the realm of the spirit. And Paul is saying that we should awaken to the reality of that realm. He said, awake ye that sleepest. When a believer is prayerless, he's sleeping. When a believer cannot remember when last they fasted, he's sleeping. He's alive physically, but spiritually he's almost dead. He's, he's unconscious of what is happening around. He can't even see the breakthrough that is coming in seven days time. He's concerned about the lack that he's in. In fact, I've realized over time that anytime you get to a situation of terrible lack, immediately after that period, if I have witnesses here, you will enter a season of abundance. Has it happened to anybody here? But you know, that's, it's like, instead of us to be patient and endure that season of lack and keep confessing the word of God till we'll enter the season of abundance, that's why a lot of people curse God. Is that true? And that's the cycle of life. There is always a season of plenty and then there is a season of lack. A believer 
who is conscious of the limitations around his physical life is uh, is sleeping spiritually is dead and the bible says that we must awake from our sleep and we must arise from the dead for you to be awakened spiritually you need to interface and interact with the ministry of the holy spirit in fact for you to arise from the dead i hope you know that a dead body cannot wake up a dead body can neither hear nor see it can neither feel or have any consciousness of his environment even jesus when he died the bible says in romans chapter 6 verse 4 that as christ was raised by the glory of the father he says so we will walk in the newness of life in other words when jesus died for that dead body to be raised it was not of his will to be raised again it was the spirit of god that came and gave life to his body and it's the same way that our life as christians will be that we are empowered by the life of the holy spirit do you know that for everything that you will need to do as a christian you will need the empowerment of the holy spirit it is not easy to love people especially your enemies it is not people it's not easy rather i mean to say it's not easy to be good to people who you know are doing a lot of things against you behind your back it will take the love of god that the bible says in romans chapter 5 verse 5 that the love of god is shared abroad in our heart by his spirit for you to have god's kind of love in you it takes the holy spirit to love through you because many times you'll be compelled by the spirit of god to smile at people who have offended you you will be compelled to forgive people who what they did to you is, is a pain that it will take you time to heal from. For you to be awake, you will need the help of the Holy Spirit. For you, know, for you to rise to the place of destiny. For you to rise to that place of grace. For you to exhibit the anointing that God has placed inside of you. For you to truly be a, a blessing to your generation. It takes the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. For you to be awake, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, which is the last scripture. And then we see how we can round up from there. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4. By the way, the title of my message this morning is Ministers of the Spirit. Ministers of the Spirit. He said, and such trust have we through Christ to God word. Go on. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth. But the Spirit giveth what? Life. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves. In the Old Testament, for you to be a priest or a Levite, you had to be chosen from a tribe. That means if you don't come from that tribe, you can't serve God. As a priest or as a Levite. But in the New Testament, grace has brought us redemption. And now the Bible says that we are not sufficient on our, of ourselves. To be sufficient means to have the supply of a thing in abundance that means you have strength in abundance that means you have the supply of everything that you need for life in abundance but you and i know that as human beings everything that we have in this life will always be exhausted including time even time you don't have enough time for everything is that true that's why I encourage all the young people that I know anywhere I go to preach. I tell them, I say, this is the only time you have to serve God. I can imagine when I'm 65 years, I will not be as strong as this. This is the time where I can pray, when I can go to church. This is the time where we can have marathon videos. You don't need to wait for church to call for program. You can gather yourself and come to church and pray. This is the time where you can expand your skill, your strength, your intellect. Because the Bible speaks of the evil days. Trust me, you will not be as strong as you are at that time. By 70, by 75, you will not be able to fast for three days dry again. 
And then that's when you begin to advise your children and say, see, during our time they told us so, but I was pursuing money. But make sure. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, remember now thy creator in the days of your youth. I mean, we have other young people who go to club, who go to party and all of that. Is that true? Uh huh. So if they spend their time and energy doing that, I should do mine for God. And the greatest investment is the investment in the kingdom. So the Bible says that we are not sufficient of ourselves. When God called you, He didn't call you because you had what it takes to fulfill destiny. He didn't call you because you could do naturally what He wants you to do. As a matter of fact, one of the signs to know that God has called you is that the assignment is given to you in the physical you may not be able to achieve it for instance god can call an accountant to be a full-time minister did he go to bible school no all his life probably he spent it at the bank counting money and then god says go and preach my word there is a prophet in the bible called amos he was a shepherd God say, go and prophesy to my people. God will put assignments on your life that naturally you cannot accomplish. You know why? So that you will not trust in your strength as a human being. Because if you think that with your strength as a human being, you can do all that God has called you to do. The Bible says, even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. There is a place where your natural strength and intellect can reach. And that's the end. He says that we are not sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who has made us able ministers. What does it mean to be a minister? Does it really mean to stand and preach the word of God? That is part of it, but not really. Does it mean to sing? Not really. Let's look at the root word of ministers. If you have amplified translation, maybe you can put it for us there. The word minister simply means to wait on the word to minister means to be in the service of someone it's like when you walk into a restaurant somebody will walk up to you if it is a big restaurant and they'll ask you what you need to eat is that true and the person will keep standing there till you make all your orders some of you can waste five minutes looking for what to order some of us when they open the order the book for us you just become confused because there's catfish soup there there's pepper soup there there's goat meat even the one you didn't cook in your house is there but that person will wait on you until you give your order or you place your order to minister simply means first of all to wait on god and then deliver to his people what he tells you so you now see why the Bible says that we are not sufficient in ourselves. If it was just to preach, you can preach a good sermon without even praying. As a matter of fact, if you have studied the Bible so much, you can preach a nice sermon without even preparing for one. You can sing and render a good special number without even rehearsing for one. Is that true? You sing every day. But to minister is a different thing. You need to wait on God till He empowers you and he sends you with a definite assignment that the bible says that our sufficiency is of god who has made us able ministers when god calls you one of the things that god will do to you is empower you with his spirit it is the spirit of god that will introduce the life of god inside of you so that you can do the things that only god can do so that you can perform miracles so that you can walk wonders and signs so that your life can be a blessing to people so that when you sing the, the message of the word of god is translated through your song to the heart of the people it takes the empowerment of the spirit and in our days i believe that we need the holy spirit even more than the azusa street revival i believe that we need the holy spirit even more than all the revivals in the past because we are living in a time when human strength is failing life expectancy is reducing by the day mortality rate is reducing the last time i checked online in nigeria mortality rate is between 45 to 55 years if you escape that range and you are not sick then it's either you are serving god or you are a very good wizard is it not true we have some of them in the village 85 years 90 years they are not using cane 
they are walking straight like this. Then somebody who is 40 years is already bending. Somebody who is 45 is already using glass. But today God will quicken us by the power of His Spirit. He says our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. Please give us that verse 6 so that we can round up now. Who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, of the New Covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The life that comes from God. The life that empowers you to be a sign and a wonder. The life that makes prayer no longer a hard work. The life that empowers you to fast. To seek the face of God. I hope you know <laughs> that if you isolate prayer and fasting from your walk with God. There is a level of God you will not touch. Can I be honest with you? There is a dimension of the knowledge of God you will not touch. And when we talk about the knowledge of God, it's not just read the Bible and put it in your head. No. I'm talking about a knowledge that is living and experiential. Something that is capable of changing your own life and transforming you, giving you God-like qualities. How do you think Jesus walked on the earth and for three and a half years he shook the whole world? Two thousand years plus later, we have not recovered from what he did in three and a half years. And there are people who have lived for 40, 50 years and nobody's hearing anything about their life. You know why? There is something about the empowerment of the spirit that Jesus had. When Jesus walked on earth, he didn't walk by himself. He walked with another life inside of him. He walked with another power at work inside of him. There was something in him that overwhelmed and lifted him above the limitations of this natural earth. One time he went to pray and his disciples went on the boat and were on the way on their way in the sea and the bible says that at the fourth watch of the night they saw jesus coming towards them excuse me he was on the mountain praying and they entered the ship and they were going like this and next thing in the midst of the storm they saw jesus coming like this what really happened it was that jesus was transported or better put he was transpirited from there where he was to where they were going to now when you carry the holy spirit he will take you from where you are. While others are running with their natural strength, He can take you and give you the God kind of speed. And in seven years, you will achieve what it would have taken 30 years to achieve. People think that social media can make you famous. Not really. Social media only makes you visible. It is the Spirit of God. You, you need a spiritual agency backing you. This world is so spiritual that even the people from the other side know best. That's why a CEO of a company will still go to a shrine and drink blood. Why? He's intelligent. He went to business school. But he knows that he needs the empowerment of a spiritual dimension to sustain what he has. Are you aware that in this world, good things don't last long? Except if that good thing is from God. Somebody becomes rich in the family goes to the village shares money for everybody and comes back and two months later is paralyzed on one side now you would have thought that when the person became rich everybody should be happy in the family somebody became offended why nine rich pastors and then because that person understands the laws of the spirit realm he knows how to manipulate it against the favor of that individual that is why for us as believers we need to be empowered by the spirit of god so when God calls you as a minister, He empowers you by His Spirit. The Spirit of God gives you the ability to represent God to your generation. So that it is beyond your words, it is beyond your song, it is beyond your face. For He has made us able ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. And tonight I believe that God wants to give life to some of us here. I believe that there are a few of us here that your walk with God has just been likened to the bones of Ezekiel. Dry and dead bones. But when the Spirit of God was introduced, those bones became a mighty army. How an army was reduced to bones, only God knows. But when the Spirit of God is introduced, 
anything that looks like a limitation around your life, when you introduce the Holy Spirit, that is what will now become the means for your exaltation. God knows how to glorify himself through the weaknesses of men. If only we are able and ready to submit our weakness to him. So somebody who is sick, not only will the Holy Spirit bring you healing, but he now makes you a vessel of healing. Somebody who is poor, the Bible says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was sick, yet for your sake, he became poor, you know, poor rather, rich. So for your sake, he became poor, so that through his poverty, you will become rich. When you introduce the Spirit of God to your poverty condition, there is a way by which he will translate you to a place where he uses you to empower others. Every weakness that is introduced or that the Holy Spirit is introduced into becomes a means for strength, becomes a means for promotion. And tonight God will introduce his spirit afresh to our lives. I want us to pray now and then after that we will pray for those who are sick and ask God to do miracles but in your seated positions I want you to stretch your hands and tell the Lord to drop something fresh in your life by the power of his spirit tell him Lord I've heard your servant speak about the importance of your spirit in my life I need an empowerment tonight tell him I need a fresh infilling of your spirit for you to stay awake in this wicked world in this world full of darkness you need to be empowered and energized by the spirit of God for you to fulfill destiny for you to live up the full expectation of your calling this is not the best of you there is more that God can do with you don't retire because of age no there is much more that God can still do your life was made as a witness of the glory and the grace and the power of God ask him to breathe upon you afresh ask him to release grace tonight tell him Holy Spirit your servant said if you are introduced to any weakness any limitation you can turn it around can you come into my state of lack can you come into my state of weakness and give me strength can you come into my state of lowliness and lift me he's the lifter of men talk to him for a minute before we pray breathe upon me breath of God breathe upon me spirit of the Lord as I lift my hands in surrender to your will, O oh Lord, I'm yielding to your spirit. I am walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore your holy, holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Can we be upstanding? I want us to pray one prayer and then I will minister and we are done tonight. If you have Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13, can you just put it for us on the screen? I want every one of us to pray this prayer and we are going to pray for ourselves and for the church. God is sending revival to his church again. God is sending spiritual empowerment over his people. Regardless of the fact that we are coming to the end of the year and with the depleting state of the economy, 
God wants you to be on fire for Him. He wants to raise you to a place of empowerment. He wants to raise you to a place of strength. He said, The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar and it shall never go out. It shall never what? Naturally, that is not possible. I can tell you that. But spiritually, it is. That when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are always on fire for God. I want God to bring us to a point where you don't need a service or a revival program to be active for God. That the fire of God is always burning in your bones. There are times when I've come back from meeting, tired, and then still go all night praying. Physically, when you look at my stature, you know I'm not so strong, actually. And I will not, I will not even try to prove any point, physically. But when it comes to the things of God, you can't tell how long I can go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No. No. It takes the empowerment of the Holy Ghost to be on fire. That was what was upon Samson. The secret of Samson's strength was not his muscles. That was why they were looking for his strength. If his strength was in his muscles, it would have been obvious that he was a muscular man. In fact, the Bible would have put it there that he was strongly built. Of King Saul, the Bible says Saul was taller than all the men of Israel. But strength in the kingdom is not by your physical body built. No. Strength in the kingdom is by the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. And God will drop that empowerment on some of us. I want you to leave this scripture and let's pray that for a minute or two. I believe that we pray in this church, isn't it? This is not congregational prayer where you put your head down and pray like this. No. I want you to cry to God and say, Fire, Father, let fire drop on my altar. On my prayer altar. Some of you, it is in the study of the word. It has gone down. Let fire rest upon my altar. I want to be empowered by your spirit. Lift your voice and, and pray that in a minute or two. Can you raise your voice and cry out to him and say, Lord, let your fire rest upon my altar. Let it be a baptism afresh of your spirit. I want to be on fire for you. I want to be awake. I want to be I want to arise from the dead so that your light can come to me. I want to be at a, a state of revival, a state of spiritual activity, always on fire for you. I want my life to be relevant to the work of your kingdom. I want to be a blessing to my generation. I want to be a blessing, a witness of your grace to my generation. I know that there is more that you can do with me. I know that this is not the end of my life. I know that this is not all that I can do. There is so much deposited inside of me. And tonight it will come, it will be manifested. Tonight it will be stirred up. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. Come on, somebody ask him for fresh fire. Ask him for fresh fire. Shabaratabayas. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Let's sing it one more time, his Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He's Lord. He's the Lord. Sing. Just 
Just lift your hands. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ, Christ is the Lord. Now please just lift your hands and close your eyes. There are nine people here that the hand of God will rest on mightily and these nine people have seen a grace for prayer and intercession. Just silence please. There are nine of them. God showed me seven but just now he said there are nine that are in this church. And God wants to put upon you a fresh anointing. It's going to be a new day for you. You are called to that place of intercession where you will stand in the gap for God's people, for your family members. I'm already feeling that fire very strong. It will rest upon nine of them. Nine of them. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, just lift your hands and receive. You don't need to say amen. I stretch my right hand all across this hall. From the front to the back, from the left to the right. At the choir stands everywhere. Those nine people that you have called to the ministry of prayer and intercession. Let your right hand rest upon them. Let that fire for intercession. It's already resting on people. That grace for intercession. To stand in the gap. Let it rest mightily upon you. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire across this hall. Nine of you be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. That grace for intercession. God will use you to win many battles. God will use you to do signs and wonders. God will use you to bring deliverance to his people. God will use you to stand in the gap. God is opening my eyes and I'm seeing just like Acts of the Apostle chapter 2. I'm seeing tongues of fire. The Bible says, and they appeared whole cloven tongues of fire. And it rested upon each one of them. And they were filled with this parapara kosova. I see a fresh anointing resting upon people here. Father, let it drop. Let it rest. Let anointings be activated now. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Let the anointing of the Spirit of God rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Let the gift of God that is inside of you be, be, be provoked to come alive. Let the gift of God inside of you be stirred up. 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 Shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. Now I'm going to pray for the sick. Araba kata barada ba shiko rebeteke baradaske masku prata la barana na boska prata kabalara. Father, anyone that needs the baptism of the Spirit of God, let it be released right now. Let it be released right now. At the count of seven. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Touch, 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 touch. Be baptized. Fresh baptism of the Spirit of God. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Tongues of men and tongues of angels. Receive it now. Receive it now. Open your mouth and begin to speak in other tongues. Receive that fresh baptism. Your life will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. 
I have just five minutes. I want to pray for the sick now. Ushers, please help us, okay? So that people don't enjoy themselves, please. I want to pray for the sick. Can I pray? These are, are, are they our mommies? Can I pray for them? Mommies, just look at me and lift your hands. I see God dropping prophetic mantles on some of them here. I'm seeing at least three of them. I'm going to pray. And any gift of God that is inside of you will come alive. There is no retirement in the kingdom. God can still use you on your, at your age. Now, Father, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Anoint anyone that has a prophetic gift among them. Let that prophetic fire rest upon them now. And let every gift that is inside of them come alive now. 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 Touch. 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 Help that woman. Touch. Before I pray for the sick, there are five people God is showing me that carry the healing anointing. And it will be stirred up right now. That healing grace will rest upon you. You will literally begin to go to the hospital and raise people from their sick bed. There are five of you that the fire of God will rest upon. And I want to see those five people. Please bring them out. The power of God will come on them and they will not be able to stand. Bring them. I want to touch them. Then I'll pray for the sick and we are done. Just lift your hands. Father, where are those five people that you showed me that the healing anointing is upon? As I count to five, Lord, let your right hand of power touch them. Let the anointing come on them so strong that they cannot stand. Hey, help this woman. That's one. Five of them at the count of five. One. Two. Three. Four. Touch. 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 From today, that grace to bring healing to the sea, it rests upon your life. Help this lady. God will use you to run signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I see God opening the eyes of people here. I see God opening your spiritual eyes. Right now, let those eyes be open. If you are sick, put your hand where the sickness is. If it is if a blood condition, put your right hand on your chest. Now, Father, all of these people that are in front... I stretch my right hand. Let your fire increase upon their lives. Let every gift that is in them come alive. From today, I declare that they will be vessels of signs. Anybody with an eye condition, if you are using glasses, remove your glass. If you want to stop using glasses, remove your glasses. Put these two fingers on your eyes. Just these two. Put it on your eyes. If you use glasses and you want to stop. If you don't want to stop, no problem. You can leave your glasses on. I know you are here, you are here in your presence, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, you are here with your power, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. Father, I take authority against affliction. I take authority against infirmity, against disease. Make sure your hand is making contact with that place. There are two people in this church that God is healing of hepatitis now. I just saw it. I just saw it. In fact, one of you is towards my right. I'm seeing an inflamed liver, hepatitis. God is touching two of you right now. He's healing you. Is healing you of hepatitis. Father, we give you praise. I command the spirit of affliction to go. I command disease to go. I command infirmity to go. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare the healing power of God to flow through your body now. Every eye condition be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Father, those who are using glasses, touch them with your mighty power now. Let their eyes be corrected now. And I command those eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Anyone with a hearing condition, the Lord heals you right now. Let those ears open now in the name of Jesus. I pray against kidney issues. There are six people here that God is purifying your kidney. Six of you. I speak healing to your kidneys right now. Healing to your kidneys right now. Healing to your kidneys. Help that woman. Healing to your kidneys right now. I command every form of tumor, fibroid, growth, disappear now. Disappear now. Let the fire of God melt every tumor, every growth, every fibroid. Be melted by fire. Be melted by fire. Be melted by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see a man, an elderly man here. You have a problem with on your chest. Like you have sharp pains. This is your heart actually. You have a condition with your heart. You feel sharp pains on your chest. You are an elderly man. God is touching you. I see two women here. You feel like a load on your chest. There's this load or weight you feel on your chest. God is removing it right now. You begin to feel light. I see God healing people of back, back and spinal issues. Back and spinal issues. In fact, as I said that, the hand of God just touched a woman now. You felt like something was pulled out of your body. You just felt like something was pulled out from your back. In the name of Jesus, be healed. There's a woman I saw there. There's a woman behind behind this one with covered behind yes yes the one behind yes right from when i sat there in the service this is not bad news but i'm prophesying it for everyone here the bible says with long life i will satisfy you and show you my salvation when i sat there i saw the spirit of death on you are you hearing me and then god showed me the vision somebody here you had a dream last night and this is related to death I'm using her to you and to everyone in this church. Every spirit of death hanging over anyone, let it be rolled away right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we uproot every arrow of death. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you give God a big hand of praise? Amen. Now, those of you, your eyes... Those of you that use glasses or you had eye eye condition, just be standing just two more minutes and I'm done. Okay. If you had an eye condition or use glasses, I want you to check your eyes now without the glasses. If you can see, just wave your right hand so that I can I can see you. Check check yourself if you can see properly now. Maybe you could not read small prints. Check yourself and then wave your right hand. Let's know that God has healed you. Let's know that God has healed you. And then if I mention your condition, can you raise your right hand so I can see you? If I mention, God bless you, come. If I mention your condition, come. Let's just identify what God has done. Can you celebrate God in this house? If I mention your condition while I was praying, just wave your right hand. Whatever the sickness is, check yourself. God has healed you. There's a woman here, you have a relative who is in a hospital right now. It's lying down on a hospital bed. The Lord just touched that person now. The Lord just touched that person right now. I just saw that person standing up from the bed. Amen and amen. In this place. Yes, what's her condition? What was her condition? Back pain that you mentioned, sir. Back pain. And she can't feel any pain anymore. God bless you. It is healed in Jesus' name. Is she also there? No, she's an ocean. Okay, okay. The lady that went out uh, said, you mentioned of growth, breast lump. 
breast hepatitis no. and hepatitis so she went out to confirm again that it's completely it, gone it is gone yes, when, when it is confirmed let me know can we celebrate god for that and in the name of jesus i feel that anointing for growth i just feel it very strong anything that looks like a growth in your body that has not been planted by god is uprooted now there's somebody here you feel like there's a growth on your eye there's this mass you feel something like a mass please come madam please come let me just do this and we are done okay please come quickly come one with a growth on the eye okay and her left left eye okay okay left eye close close the eye that she can see with let's check and be sure can you see me no you can't see me yes sir how many of us want god to do this miracle and how many of us want to see it done now just this and i'm done sir okay please bring, come forward let me pray for her stretch your hands towards her the Bible says if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. God is a God that heals. Alright? Cataract usually is an operation that is recommended. But how, will, how that God will heal her tonight and then she can see with this eye. Father, you are a loving father and you love to heal your people. Right now, ask in the name of Jesus that you touch the left eye of your daughter Amen. we rebuke cataract Amen. every growth in this eye everything that is not of God yes, Lord. be uprooted right now Amen. be uprooted now Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Father we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Examine the eye for her. Yes, any other person that God healed? Any other person that God healed? Let's just see you. Any other person that God healed? Yes, sir. God bless you. What was the condition? God healed you. What was the condition? Huh? I can't hear you. He can see clearly. You can see more than before. You can see me from there. Can we celebrate God for that? What was wrong with you? Huh? Yes, please let him come so we can hear him. Please be seated. Please be seated. God bless she you. can now see to the she can see. God. <laughs> she can see everyone. She can see everyone. She can see all of them. Tell, tell her to touch anybody. She, she should go and touch them. Are you just looking like that? Celebrate Jesus. See what the Lord has done. What we wait for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Yes, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I give you Let's know how long was that condition. Yes, sir. Sir, look at me. I think I, I thought we could have. What was wrong with you, sir? You couldn't see. You couldn't see. I can't see normal, but now I can see. You could see clearly. From, you, you couldn't see from far or near. You couldn't see from far. I want you to read anything that is on that screen. As a minister say, awake in the realm of the spirit. Read what is under what you just read. As a minister, stay awake in the realm of the spirit. Can you clap for your hands and give God praise? That's it. How long was it? She has been blind for five years. For five years? Five years. And you just sat down there. That's how you celebrate God. Five, five. years. Five. Blindness. What we waited for. Let's sing that song again as I round has up. come to pass. See what the Lord. Let me 
pray for you. Just hold my hand. Father, you have healed her, strengthened her body, and Amen. visit her family. Amen. This condition will never return again. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, this is a real miracle. Blind for five years on one eye. This is an elderly woman in tears. This is not fake. Now, just the way God has done this, may God use every one of us. Go forth and be a sign and a wonder to your generation. Amen. Lift your hands. You see these hands you are lifting? They will command signs and wonders. Amen. From today, everything you touch must prosper. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to shout amen three times. Amen. 